Okay, so once we started the hormones, this is actually, actually, when we back up, before I started, this real life experience test is the critical component to going beyond the gender and hormone issues into the actual sex reassignment process and having surgeries. They said, we need you to literally live your life as best you can as a woman for a year. And if you can, if you can survive that, if this proves to be something you're happy with you, and you really want to do this, then we'll pretty much rubber stamp this and say, yes, this really is a good idea. So, so uh, the learning curve began. Everything from buying clothing to buying makeup to buying a, a beautiful hairpiece to hide the fact that I'm bald and things like that. Um, it all costs money, and facial hair removal, there's another issue. Um, I've had my face lasered nine times, that was not fun. It cost $2,000, it's removed quite a bit of the hair that's there, but there's still more hair, and there's still, the next step would be electrolysis, which is really the only permanent way to remove hair. Again, no one wants to, uh, no one in the MCP system wants to cover any of this stuff. You're on your own, Jennifer. Um, then what happens? One of the hormones is known as a testosterone blocker. You want to block the testosterone that the body's producing so that the estrogen can actually work its so-called magic to feminize the body. Well, I, my body didn't like the blockers, so basically I spoke with my doctors. We made the decision, well, let's get rid of the testosterone producers. Um, now, how do we do that? Well, we, we have surgery. And who pays for that? Well, Jennifer, you do. do you have, how's your credit card bill? Um, can I do that here? No. Okay. So off I went to Philadelphia and I found a, a doctor who was quite happy to perform a bilateral orchiectomy, also known as castration, removing the testicles. And uh, we got that done. And that solved the problem of having to take a testosterone blocker. Um, my voice is obviously uh, an issue I'm going to have to deal with I want, if I want to be more passable as a woman. And there's nobody here uh, in the healthcare system that's willing to help me with that, so I'm on my own. You are doing it yourself. Uh, voice retraining kits out there, but they're not very effective. And so it's a time-consuming thing as well. I'm not going to totally blame the healthcare system on that one. It's something I need to do. But, uh, again, there's there's no resources here to help me with that if I did want help. Um, let's see here. All right. So a year after I had been Jennifer, uh, I got the recommendation letters from everyone saying yes, Jennifer really is a woman and needs to become biologically female. Jennifer needs sex reassignment surgery for her own health. Um, which is exciting for me to kind of have that validation. I know myself, who I am and what I feel. My family and friends, a little different. How do you know? Are you sure? And when a doctor writes a letter that says yes, it kind of validates everything and makes it all kind of seem more legit and more official. Um, I, I knew what the uh, policies were here, but just for fun I went to MCP and said, Hi, I've got a letter from my Newfoundland doctor who has a license to practice medicine and has made this recommendation. How would you feel about providing this care for me? Um, I need to have surgery, sex reassignment surgery. It's uh, $18,000. Uh, there's a clinic in Montreal that's uh, the best in Canada. In fact, they're the best in the world. I would love to go there. Um, they said, Well, no, we've got a piece of legislation that was written 15 years ago that says we only cover that if you're approved by a particular organization known as CAMH, formerly known as the Clark Institute of Psychiatry in Toronto, Ontario. And I knew that's what they would say. Um, <clears throat> okay. um, 40, 50 years ago, transsexualism was viewed as a mental disorder, and the way to treat people like myself was counseling. And at the time, CAMH was the only real entity out there that did this. So I guess it was made logical sense for government entities to say, well, we'll send people there. Um, but you know what, times have changed, and CAMH is not kept up with them. Um, they uh, basically, they do have a gender identity clinic. I guess backing up, CAMH is a major player in psychiatry in the world. They do a lot of great things. Gender identity is not one of them, in my opinion, um, but uh, I guess because of their reputation, they've got this kind of stronghold on that role. Um, they've, they are quite secretive about their assessment protocol. They definitely are not conforming with global best practices, including Harry Benjamin. They have additional uh, things in there that have nothing to do with gender identity. Um, I guess the biggest blatant issue I'm aware of is that they 